Today I'm going to make a systematic defense for why I'm still bullish on the NASDAQ and uh, we're going to do it through data. So stay tuned. Let's jump in. Okay, so the NASDAQ's got a plus seven score on the edge finder. And I wanted to just discuss a little bit of the macro here, as well as the sentiment in this market as to why I still think that the NASDAQ has room to continue its rally higher. So just for those of you who are not uh, edge finder users or you're newer to this thing, where we call uh, the, the score as bullish is a five or greater score. And we look at things like the commitment of traders, retail sentiment, seasonality, trend, et cetera, so on and so forth. But we added this new table. And if you're an edge finder user, I highly encourage you to check out the new stock indices data scanner because I'm really excited about this. Now we can rapid fire the state of the economy and give ourselves a nice score overall. So check this out. GDP growth came out better than expected. That is bullish for the NASDAQ. Manufacturing PMIs came in lighter than anticipated. Not not so hot for the NASDAQ. Services PMI came in really strong. Great for the NASDAQ. Retail spending or retail sales month over month came in really good. That's really good for the NASDAQ. CPI is cooling nicely. Inflation's coming down, which gives the Fed room to cut rates. Very good for the NASDAQ. Uh, core CPI, not so great. So extracting some food and energy from that calculation, we have a little bit less exciting story on inflation, but it's still coming down on a broader scheme. So not great for the NASDAQ there. NFP was a little bit weak and unemployment rate was a little bit uh, weak as well with unemployment ticking up to 4.3%. Finally, interest rates seem to be trending down on the eight-day moving average of the two-year uh, two yield. That's very positive as we see interest rate expectations to come lower, improving uh, in the Fed September rate cut meeting. So anyways, all of that to say, what we just did and what I want to show you as very important is that if you're somebody trying to incorporate fundamentals, having a systematic approach is very, very important. We just categorically went through the main things, the main metrics that we look at to determine whether or not the NASDAQ is bullish or bearish on an overall basis. Coming up next, we do have the NFP report coming in next week, as same with the unemployment rate uh, data. That will be huge to whether or not this goes into a super bullish reading or if it is going to stay where it currently is. So just wanted to point that out. This new dashboard that I've been working on, I think is looking a lot better. It helps you to spot all the different macro stuff for the edge finders uh, breakdown of the NASDAQ very quickly. So also I just wanted to mention off of this, if you would like to get access to this tool, it is currently 35% off using the first link in the description down below. Let's take a look at the technical price action chart on the NASDAQ to get a better idea of what that's looking like. So here's a look at the NASDAQ on a daily chart. And I wanna do a little bit of a price action synopsis here. If we take a look at the moving averages first, you can notice that as price came down to this 200 day moving average, we did see nice support for the NASDAQ. In fact, we touched this once and we saw a big wick off of that Monday low. And then we saw a second retest of that 200 day moving average before price exploded higher here. Now, here is my pitch for why I think that the NASDAQ actually has more room to continue to run. First of all, this discount on the NASDAQ was very nice. 17% pullback is a very healthy thing in a NASDAQ bull market run, right? You don't usually see markets run forever in one way. So this movement here recently was not only healthy, but also necessary, I think, if we're going to see a continued bull market run here for the NASDAQ. So not only that, we also saw something recently that was interesting. We saw a big break of this key level of what was support turned resistance now seems to potentially be turning support again. If we can get a nice bounce and break through these highs, we very well may be set to return back to the highs around 20,709. And there's a key event. There's a really specific reason why I'm talking about the NASDAQ today. As tomorrow, we have a very important earnings report coming from the most important stock arguably in the NASDAQ itself, which is the NVIDIA uh, stock. NVIDIA is one that I own a little bit of shares in, 42 shares of NVIDIA. I bought this on a dip recently. And um, we have earnings for NVIDIA after the bell tomorrow. And after the bell means after 4 p.m. Uh, the stock market closes, we get earnings report come out for NVIDIA. And this will either make or break the NASDAQ rally that we've seen recently. If the NVIDIA earnings come out disappointing in any way, it is likely that the stock will drop a lot. And because it carries a lot of weighting and secular importance to the AI trade, it could bring down the NASDAQ or continue the push higher. 
you know, I think that the earnings report for NVIDIA will likely be very good. The question is, is it going to be good enough for this market, which has very high expectations for tech stocks? That is the question that we will be watching closely for tomorrow. But I do want to mention that on a short term basis for somebody watching the NASDAQ, I do think that we could see a good kind of uh, move back up to this recent high here, just shy of 20,000 on the NASDAQ. So I really like the trade. I think that there's more upside to go. I am currently long a very heavy uh, contributor to the NASDAQ, which is semiconductor stocks. I have SMH in my portfolio. So though I'm not trading NASDAQ right now, I am currently long the semiconductors ETF SMH, which has companies like NVIDIA, Qualcomm, AMD, um, Taiwan Semi, etc., all baked within the, the ETF. For those of you who are maybe newer to ETFs, ETFs are basically just a basket of many different stocks all in one symbol, which is really convenient. So I can trade all the semiconductors or all the major ones in one single symbol. So very cool. Just wanted to mention that. Another area of the market that I've been watching really closely is the Russell. The Russell has been pulling back here a little bit today. And uh, as long as we continue to see expectations for interest rate cuts, I think that the Russell will really do well. I think that there is a potential that you see a continued push. I talked about this yesterday quite a bit for the possibility of a breakthrough this high. If that happens, that could lead to higher prices from there. I think that, you know, the Russell, the, the layout for the Russell still looks pretty good. And as long as we see inflation continue to come down and the Fed can cut rates, I think the Russell could be a strong pick uh, for the second half of this year. That's my personal opinion. If I'm wrong about that, you know, I'll deal with the consequences by stopping out or trailing out of my trade. By the way, before we move on to gold, which I will discuss in just a moment, I just wanted to talk about the Russell for a second more. I am currently long IWM. IWM is a uh, ETF, again, off that ETF concept that tracks the Russell 2000. I've trailed my stop loss just below this consolidation phase. So if we do drop from here, I'll just take a profit on the trade. And if we continue to rip and take out those highs that I just mentioned, then it will be continuing to trail stops from there. Now we can discuss gold for just a moment. What we can see here is gold is just near the highs and, uh, you know, very close. Looks like it really wants to continue to squeeze higher. I'm not going to lie. I would love that to happen because I'm currently bullish, but I do think, uh, that there is a very solid chance that gold continues its onward march here um, and continues to, to beat up the bears this year. This has been a rough year to be bearish on gold. It is having one of its best years in a while. Uh, it's up over 22%, I think, so far this year, which is actually outpacing the returns of the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ, which is very impressive. So, um, you know, we're looking for more, more upside here for gold, at least uh, I am. I'm currently long GLD, which is an ETF that tracks uh, gold prices. So, you know, I've got a little bit of a trade going on here. It's not the biggest size position for me as I am uh, kind of short on uh, available cash in my my stock brokerage, which by the way, if you're looking for a better brokerage, you can trade with the one that I use, which is Weeble. Down below in the description, there is a link to sign up with this. And if you're not in the US and you're looking for a better CFD broker, Forex broker, etc., there will be several links down below in the description that all offer special sign up perks for viewers and subscribers of my YouTube channel. Here's the latest on the top setup algorithm on the edge finder we can see the dow jones getting a bullish rating the pound us dollar the nzd usd if we take a look at the australian dollar the euro dollar the nasdaq these things are getting more bullish readings and then things like dollar swiss franc and dollar against the japanese yen are getting more bearish readings let's dive into just a couple of those currency pairs for a moment and we'll discuss that a little bit more uh, thoroughly so the nasdaq i'm sorry the nzd uh, usd this is the new zealand dollar is trading near a high so there's not really anything i can do in terms of a setup here. If take a look at the pound, sort of the same story. We've had a really explosive move. I'm looking for the wave down in order to potentially get some interesting setups going on that one. And the same story for the euro dollar. 61.8% retracement is a ways away, but it's really the only spot that I see a setup that makes sense. Uh, the Australian dollar is tapping up against resistance here. Let's see if we can get some sort of breakout and then uh, maybe a retest entry. But for now, Nothing really setting up immediately on the currency side. I also know just from memory that the dollar yen is near the lows. I'd either like one of two scenarios for possible sell setups going in line with the edge finders confirmation. I'm either looking for a bounce back up into this 50% retracement zone or a break through the lows and fresh selling could take place around that 142 level on a retest. So I've got a couple setups 
pending, but nothing really setting up for immediate action in the market. And sometimes people ask, you know, what am I looking for on the edge finder to place trades? What I'm looking for is I go to the top setups algorithm page. I go to the category. I remove minor currency pairs because I personally don't really trade them. And then what I also do is I exclude from the reading neutrals. So I'm only getting bullish, bearish, very bearish, or very bullish readings on the edge finder. I also thought this was interesting. The put call ratio is something I've increasingly found myself looking at, especially since that recent spike in the put call. Remember, a high reading on the put call tells you that people are very much scared about what's happening in the markets and they're buying puts on the S&P 500, on stocks, et cetera, to maybe cushion or hedge or even get bearish on the market. Whenever this thing pops higher into the extreme fear level, that is more of a bullish signal. And when we get to extreme depths on this, I look to really tighten my stop loss, uh, trail stops tighter on some of my longs, and um, you know maybe even set up for some short selling opportunities if I see something that I really am more bearish on. But currently, I'm really way more on the long side of the indices. I've been that way for some time. Um, but you know, continuing to watch that, we've also got things like the Nikkei, many charts that we could continue to go off of uh, here for today. But that is going to wrap up what I've got for you. Before I end this, remember, it is 35% off to get access to our tool here. If you'd like to get access to the same tool that I use to place pretty much every trade that I do in the markets, get access to the Edge Finder Pro. It is currently 35% off with the first link in the description. Thanks for watching. If you're looking for a better brokerage, then stick around for a second. I'm going to tell you how you can get some free sign-up perks with great brokerages all around the world. Whether you trade FX or indices, commodities, futures, all of the above, I'm going to show you a really cool way that you can get free sign-up perks with your new account. So if you're interested in switching into a different brokerage, you can get things like deposit bonuses or free stock shares, or you can even get access to some of our products for completely free. All you have to do to find out current perks being offered to new new depositors is go to a1trading.com slash brokers. That's a1trading.com slash brokers. And as you look at that page, you'll see all these different offerings that we've currently locked down for you guys as subscribers, as viewers. Now, of course, we get something out of this. If you choose to use these links, you'll be supporting our page. But in return for the viewers, we've got great sign up perks available for you guys so that you get some free game just by signing up for a brokerage if you're looking to do so. So check it out on our website. You can find current deals at a1trading.com slash brokers. Thanks for watching this video. And on the screen right now, you'll see some other options of other videos we put together that might be helpful to you in your trading career. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.